A lot's happened in the last two years in the battle to abolish abortion. A lot's happened. Well, there's some good things. A lot of good things have happened. Some things that are not so great. Some things that people think are great, but that really are. But I want to start us off this evening with a reality check of what we're talking about. Right now, this year, 2023, America is on pace for there to be 1,102,000 elective abortions take place on America's soil in our country this year, by the end of the year. That is the highest number of abortions recorded, of elective abortions, known abortions, since 2010. Friend, the way we are dealing with this issue, the way we've dealt with this issue for 50 years, more than 50 years, has not worked. It hasn't worked. There's more than 65 million children that have been murdered over the last 50 years and counting and not slowing. It has not worked and it is not working in this country. What's the problem? What's the problem? I think the fundamental problem really goes back to one of my favorite verses in Scripture. I think probably a lot of you have read this verse, studied this verse, meditated on this verse, memorized this verse even. And this is it. Trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He shall direct your paths. That's what God says. That's the promises that He makes. Now, what does that mean? Well, most of the words in that are very easy to understand. Don't trust in the Lord. Don't lean on your own understanding, right? Don't think that you're wise. Trust in God instead. But then it says, in all your ways, acknowledge Him. What does that mean to acknowledge Him? Right? We would say, well, I have knowledge of God. No, that's, that's not what that word there means. Or that just like if I'm driving in my truck, you know, through our neighborhood, that's some stuff going out of my neighborhood. You know, give them a little thing. Head nod. Okay, I, I acknowledge your existence. I go, hey, yeah, I'm not ignoring you. you know, I'm acknowledging you. No, 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 that, that's not what this word means either. It's not just acknowledging the existence of God. It said when I see this word acknowledge in Scripture, what it means here is the way that I like to think about it is it's like a enlisted man, enlisted soldier, acknowledging a superior officer. Right? With a salute. Yes, sir. It's acknowledging that this is a superior officer and acknowledging the authority of the superior officer. And so here when God tells us to, in all of our ways, acknowledge him, is to acknowledge that he is the superior officer. He is the authority over some of our ways. No, over all of our ways. And we're to acknowledge Him. If we want Him to direct our paths, then we must acknowledge Him in all of our ways. We must acknowledge Him as the Lord and the authority, the superior officers over our personal lives. Over our families, we have to acknowledge Him and say, Yes, sir, what you say, you are the authority over my family, God. In our churches, we say, yes, sir, you are the authority over my church and the way we govern our churches. But it doesn't end there. Because he's not just the head of all of those things, but he's also the king of kings, the lord of lords. And so when it comes to our civil society and our civil governments, we have to say, yes, sir, we acknowledge that you are the head of all. That the government is on your shoulders. That all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to Christ. Not just 
over the church, but over all authority. All authority. And we must acknowledge that authority in all of our ways if we want to seek and direct our path. I believe the reason that we've been losing on this issue for 50 years and we continue to lose on this issue and why this year, although Roe is gone, as we've talked about, yet we continue to lose because we refuse to acknowledge it. You go talk to most pro-life leaders, you see pro-life leaders, a lot of times they'll get confronted with pro-abortion you know, media or pro-abortion leaders. And they'll, 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 they'll try to get a gotcha on them. And the pro-abortion, pro-choice side will say, well, hey, you pro-life people, you just want to impose your religious views on us. And you'll see the pro-life leaders 99 times out of 100 say, oh, no, 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 no. No, we don't want to do that. No, 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 this is all about reason and science and logic and human rights. Yeah. And yeah, all those things are good. All those things are good, but but I hear them say that I'm reminded of several years ago on the Republican Party ballot here in Texas, there was a question. And again, it wasn't to the, it, you know, the, a vote on this wouldn't make it law, but there's a question, do you support uh, the, the uh, abortion being abolished, basically, the basic question. So we as an organization, we decided, hey, that's a great opportunity to go out outside the polls and ask people, hey, did you vote in the Republican primary? If they say yes, we say, did you vote yes for Proposition 7 to abolish abortion? If they say yes, then we'll say, great, that's what we, we're fighting for that. You want to sign our petition and we'll get on our list and we'll let you know more about the fight for the abortion. So we send people out all across the state and go out to polling places to do that. So our board members, Chris Young Blood and I, we went out to a polling place right here in Georgetown. And we were out there, we were had lots of great interactions. And then this one older couple came out and uh, the Democrat primary was going on at the same time. So we asked, did you vote in the Republican primary? And this gentleman said, well, what are y'all, why? What are y'all out here for? They said, well, we're out here supporting the ball of abortion. And this man said, boys, y'all ain't got the right equipment between your legs to be talking about what a woman does with her body. Like, okay. Okay. And obviously, he's wrong. Right? Truth is true. The man in the identity is the person who's promoting it or who's speaking it. And ultimately, it's not about her body, it's about the body inside of her body. But there's one sense in which he's correct, and that is who are we? Who are we to tell someone what to do with their body or even tell someone else what to do with their own baby? Who are we? Whether we're male or female, who are we? To do that, that's really what this issue comes down to. Like pretty much every other issue, it comes down to who says? Right? You remember being out on the playground with a child and you tell some other child, well, you can't do that. And then what's the retort that you hear? But see, it says who? It says who? Well, the pro-life movement for 50 years has not had a good answer. It's just been, well, well, science says, well, what history says, well, you know, common sense says, or logic says. Okay, well, you can have all that, but the, re the response will be good. But I say, I can do that. I can make life my job. That's where a lot of the pro-abortion movement has actually gone. You may not hear it on the front lines as much, but in the lot of the pro-abortion academia, a lot of them were saying, okay, we'll give it to you. It is a baby, it is a human life. From fertilization, okay, you got that. But the mom can still take the life of her own child. Who are you to say she can't? Her, her child, who are you? 
Well, as an abolitionist, we have the answer to this question. And we say, God says. God says. That, that's who says. Right? So it doesn't matter whether I'm a man or a woman or whether I've had a pregnancy before or, or, or adopted someone before or anybody else. It's ultimately not about me or my identity or what I say or any kind of science or human rights or, or reason or logic, although all those things are good. But they're secondary. What's primary is who says. And so when people say, oh, well, you're just trying to impose your religious views, it's like, no, I'm just trying to tell you who says. I'm just telling you that the God who created you, he says you can. And if you want to interpret that as I want to impose my religious view on you, then guilty as charged. Because he's God. I'm just delivering the bill. I'm just telling you what he says and what he tells me. Is telling you he says. And what does he say? He's very clear. He says, you shall not murder. He says, whoever sheds from man's blood by man shall his blood be shed for the, in the image of God may be man. Amen. He says to civil officials, you shall not show partiality yes. in judgment. He says, you shall do justice to the fallen. <laughs> he says, you shall rescue the perishing. Amen. That's what he says. That's what God says. And so that's what we say. And we may be accused of being religious zealots or theocrats or whatever else, but we're going to keep saying it. We're going to keep saying this, thus saith the Lord. Because there's no other authority that there's no other authority except his ultimate authority, the authority that he delegates. So why would we not mention him? His laws are written on the hearts of every man and woman. Every pro-abortion or pro-life man and woman, his law is written on our hearts. So of course, we, we believe we should use God's word. Because it's ultimately not about what we believe, it's about what he says. That's the bottom line. And that's why we've been losing, because we've been afraid to do that. But not here. Not this group, not these people here. We don't want to be afraid to do that. We want to be saved. Thus saith the Lord. And you know what? He's big enough. He, if, if he wants to bring the victory, he's going to bring it. And you know, when, we, when we're willing to say, Thus saith the Lord, you know what that does? That gives him glory. But when we're saying, Oh, no, 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 this isn't about God. This isn't about God. Then God says, okay, this is all about you. This is all you. I don't want that. I want to be on the Lord's side. Morality without Christ is built on sand. That's the issue. Remember Christ talking about the man who builds on the rock versus the man who builds on the sand? When we build this on science and reason and historical precedent, human rights, all these things, that's ultimately sad. And that's where our foundation is. The foundation has to be on the rock of Christ and his word. Not just because we think it will work. No, it will. Not just because we want his blessings, though we do want them. But we do it because this is what he commands us to do. This is what he commands us to do. Not to be ashamed of the gospel, or to be ashamed of him, or to deny him before men. If we deny him before men, he says he'll deny us before the Lord. But we're doing this in obedience. We're doing this in love. To love the Lord our God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. And what does he tell us to do? To love our neighbor. And how do we love our neighbor? As ourselves. That's what we want to do. Everything else is secondary.